Binabati ko kayo mga kapatid sa pangalan ng ating Panginoong Heso Kristo. Sa pagpapatuloy natin ng ating Sunday School sa Christian Holiness ay nasa huling pangkatayo ng mga kasalanan na ating tinatalakay na tinawag kong sins about death. At ito ay may kinalaman sa katotohanan ng we will all face death. Death is a human commonality. Ecclesiastes is one book that shows that there is no exemption from death. Kung kaya naman gumagawa ang tao ng sari-saring paraan, paano niya mapagaan ang kamatayan? There are human ways of coping with death and those human ways unguided by scripture will always prove wrong. Nandiyan ang mga relihiyon na gumagawa ng mga pamahiin o may mga itinuturong mga kamalian para mapagaan ang kamatayan. At kung hindi man relihiyon, nandiyan ang mga iba't ibang saloobin, saloobin ng pag-iwas o saloobin ng wala ang pakialam para lamang mapagaang ang usapin ng kamatayan. Ngunit para sa mana ng palataya, ang tamang umpisa ay tingnan natin ang kamatayan na parusa sa kasalanan. God did not create man to die. Death is not in the nature of man at the original creation. Death is a penalty of sin. Therefore, death is evil. It is not native to human creation. In fact, there are explicit scriptures that call it an enemy. 1 Corinthians 15.26 is one that says the last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. And because death is evil, death is an enemy, hindi natin pwedeng pagandahin ang kamatayan. Hindi ito pinagdiriwang. This is not to be celebrated or romanticized but for the christian there is the certainty of victory over death because of christ and his resurrection we hold fast in faith to the last i am statement of seven in the gospel of john the last of which says i am the resurrection and the life he who believes in me though he may die yet shall he live jesus here concedes that even believers die pero meron silang pagtatagumpay sa kamatayan dahil sa pagkabuhay na muli ng ating panginoong heso kristo sila man ay mabubuhay na muli sa pagdating ng ating panginoong Heso Kristo. Kaya may mga kasalanan na tayong dapat harapin at daigin na karugtong ng kamatayan. Because death is unavoidable, we all will have to face it one way or the other. We all have, whether conscious of it or not, a disposition to death. And unless that disposition is biblically guided, without biblical guidance, disposition to death can be sinful. At may apat tayong tinitingnan na kasalanan patungkol sa death and dying. Tinignan na natin ang bandage to fear, pagkaalipin sa takot. Tinignan na natin ang thoughts of suicide, pag-iisip ng pagpapatiwakal. At titingnan natin ngayon ang view of fatalism, pananaw ng kapalaran, at sa kalooban ng Panginoon ay titingnan natin ang practice of occult, ang gawain ng occult. And so, we have already seen the sin of bondage to fear. And again, I clarify, it is not fear itself that is sin. There is a right fear of dying. And if you rightly fear dying, you want to avoid death where possible. In fact, that means that you would want to live long if that it is the Lord's will for you. In fact, long life is considered a blessing from the Lord according. According to Psalm 91, and that means death wish is not justified just because you decide to go to heaven, or more often than not, because you want to end suffering. Ayo mo nang magpatuloy ang hirap dito sa mundo, kaya kung minsan nagkakaroon ka ng death wish o paghangad ng kamatayan, the right balance is struck by Paul in Philippians 1 that he knows there is a good thing awaiting the Christian who dies. It is far better to be with Christ but it is more necessary to live on in order that one may serve. Kaya nga kapag hinayaan natin gapusin tayo ng takot sa kamatayan then it becomes sinful bondage. Isang makasalanang pagkaalipin. 
Tinignan na rin natin ang sin of thoughts of suicide and I made it clear that we do not go along with the Roman Catholic teaching that suicide is a mortal sin na kapag ikaw ay nagpatiwakal sa makatwid, uh, patunay ito na ikaw ay pupunta sa kapahamakan dahil hindi ka kristyano kapag ikaw ay nagpatiwakal. Merong tamang pagkakaiba-iba ang mga kasalanan pero hindi ito ayon sa katuroang katoliko na mortal sin na pang impyerno venial sin at pang purgatorio in fact the Bible teaches that every sin is damnable every sin deserves damnation Romans 6.23 says for the wages of sin is death, not only death in the physical sense but death in its ultimate sense of eternal punishment but there is in Christ grace that overcomes sin Kaya in Christ, grace proves greater than sin. Kaya nga ang Romans 5.20 ay isa sa mga gusto nating mga talata because it gives the assurance that where sin abounded, grace abounded much more. Hindi ginapi ng kasalanan ng biyaya ni Kristo sa halip ang biyaya ni Kristo ay mas sumagana kaysa sa kasalanan. So we are saying that Believers are vulnerable to thoughts, even the act of suicide. It remains a grave offense, it is a serious offense, but it does not revert salvation. Pero gusto kong liwanagin ng isang mananampalatayang naglilingkod sa Panginoon at sa kanyang paglilingkod, sumuong siya sa panganib na maaring malagay siya sa kamatayan, this is not the same as sinful suicide. Exposing self to death in kingdom service is not sinful suicide as Paul makes clear in Acts 20 and verse 24. Ang maituturing nating makasalanang pagpapatiwakal is that which is taking one's life out of hopelessness. Yan ang karaniwan na ugat ng pagpapatiwakal. Nawawala ng pag-asa at sinabi nga natin ang tunay na pag-asa, ang pag-asa na magpawalang hanggan ay na kay Heso Kristo lamang. Titingnan natin ngayon ang ikatlong uri ng kasalanan sa usapin ng kamatayan, the sin of view of fatalism. Ang kasalanan ng pananaw ay kapalaran. Let me again begin with clarification. There is a biblical teaching of predestination. May pagtatakda ang Diyos at yan ay itinuturo sa Biblia at sa pagtatakda niya lahat ng nangyayari ay nasa kanyang saklaw ng kanyang kalooban. Ito man ay kanyang pinagpasyahan o pinahintulot ngunit saklaw ang lahat ng kanyang kalooban pero hindi ito katulad ng kapalaran. Predestination is not the same as fatalism. And rather than giving you many verses of scriptures that pertain to predestination, a very good summary of that is in the 1689 Baptist Confession of Faith in chapter 3, paragraph 1. It says, In part, God hath decreed in himself from all eternity by the most wise and holy counsel of his own will, freely and unchangeably all things whatsoever comes to pass yet so as thereby is god neither the author of sin nor hath fellowship with any therein nor is violence offered to the will of the creature Kaya maliwanag na walang nangyayari na hindi saklaw ng kalooban ng diyos pero hindi gumagawa ng dahas sa kalikasan o kalayaan ng isang nilikha niya gaya ng tao na may kalooban at responsibilidad sa kanyang buhay. Kaya human free agency and responsibility is not undermined by God's predestination. Kaya ano man ang pagtuturo na tinatanggap natin tungkol sa pagkasuberano ng Diyos, maintain this, divine sovereignty must not clash with human freedom and responsibility. Yan ang madalas nakauwian ng mga bagong nakakatuto ng pagkasoberano ng Diyos ay parang walang responsibilidad ang tao. Isinagot na yan kahit sa bagong tipan pa lamang. In Romans 9, 19-21, Paul says, You will say to me then, why does he still find fault for who resists his will? On the contrary, who are you, O man, who answers back to God? The thing molded will not say to the molder, Why did you make me like this, will it? Or does not the potter have a right over the clay to make from the same lump one vessel for honorable use and another for common use? 
the key word here is from the same lump. Pareho tayong kinuha at hinubog mula sa putikan, mga makasalanan at nasa soberanong pasya ng Diyos. Kung ginusto niyang tayong lahat ay mapahamak, magagawa niya yun ng maayon sa kanyang katarungan. Ngunit sa kanyang soberanong kahabagan ay minabuti niyang magligtas ng kanyang mga hinirang. At therefore, it is wrong to charge God's sovereignty as being unjust. Another thing to clarify is that there is a free and universal offer of the gospel to all. Iniaalok ang ebanghelyo sa lahat. At ang kadalasan nangyayari, many reject the gospel offer on pretext of God's sovereignty. Ginagamit pa nila ang pagkasuberano ng Diyos na inirereklamo nila pagkatapos kapag sinabing may ebanghelyong Iniaalok sa kanila, sasabihin nila, eh baka hindi ako elect, baka hindi ako hinirang ng Diyos. Ginagamit nila ang pagkasuperano ng Diyos para tanggihan ang iniaalok na ebanghelyo sa kanila. Parang katulad ito ng sinagot ni Apostol Pablo sa Romans 3, 7 and 8. For if the truth of God has more abounded through my lie unto His glory, Why, yet am I also judged as a sinner and a traitor, as we be slanderously reported, as, and as, as some affirm that we say, let us do evil that good may come. Ang sinasabi nila ay tinakda na pala ng Diyos. Eh, kung ako'y maging masama, tinakda yun ng Diyos eh, para sa mabuting layunin niya, eh, bakit kami hahatulan? At ang sagot ni Pablo Rian ay their damnation is just. Kung ganyan ka mag-isip, sinisisi mo sa pagkasuberano ng Diyos, ang iyong responsibilidad ay karapat dapat lamang ang iyong hatol. Ang fatalism ay iba sa predestination. Predestination is by a holy, gracious, and merciful God, whereas fatalism views events as irresistibly predetermined by impersonal force. Eh, siguro ang pinakapopular na slogan ng fatalism ay Kay sera sera What will be, will be Ngayon, idugtong mo yan sa kamatayan Diyan magiging view of fatalism na kasalanan When death is viewed as irresistible fate It is sinful fatalism So, when is fatalism a sinful view in relation to death? May dalawang pangusap na tila magkasalungat, ngunit para itong dumurugtong sa pananaw ng kapalaran. The first is something familiar to you. It is not original with me. I am the master of my faith. I am the captain of my soul. This is a line popularized by William Ernest Henley. When he was recuperating from his amputation, he wrote a poem which became the most famous of his poems. He called it Invictus. Invictus in Latin means unconquerable or undefeated, invincible. Ganyan niya sinasabi ang kanyang pananaw sa kanyang buhay. The most famous stanza is the last which says it matters not how straight the gate, how charged with punishments the scroll. I am the master of my faith. I am the captain of my soul. Kaya pinapakita niya rin, hindi siya takot sapagkat nasa, nasa kamay niya. Ang kanyang buhay, nasa kamay niya ang kanyang hinaharap. What we see here is self-confident attitude that the future is for one to determine. At maaaring magkaroon ito ng mga bunga na dulot ay body exaltation. Kung nasa pagpapalakas ng aking katawan, ang aking pagpapatuloy ng buhay, then it leads to the exaltation of the body and in our time the main virtues that are exalted are health and beauty and this has become a very expensive uh, industry in our day in 2017 it amounted to a 4.2 trillion dollars of industry which includes the idea of Healthy eating, nutrition, weight loss, fitness, and, and mind, body, personal care, beauty, anti-aging, 
Now, I'm not saying that these are bad things na pangalagaan mo ang mga bagay na may kinalaman sa yung kalusugan. It is rather a matter of priority when it becomes the exaltation of the body and it is defining of your humanity, something is wrong. So, this attitude of fatalism is one of self-delusion. Panlilin lang ng sarili. Panlilin lang ito tungkol sa inaakala niyang control of one's life. Kontrolado niya ang kanyang buhay at maari niyang planuhin ang kanyang hinaharap. He can project the future even in terms of his life length or his longevity. At ang sagot natin niya na yung sinabi ni James. For what is your life? It is even a vapor that appears for a little time and then vanishes away. Napaka nipis ng iyong buhay para linlangin mo ang sarili mo na kaya mong panatilihin ang buhay mo sa sapat na pagbabantay at pangangalaga. Yet, care of the body is good but soul state is more important. So, body exaltation is that which exalts the body to the, at the expense of the state of the soul. And this is what 1 Timothy 4.8 says, For bodily exercise profits little, but godliness is profitable unto all things, having promise of the life that now is, and of that which is to come. So, hindi tinatanggi na may pakinabang, ang iyong body exercise, ang iyong body caring, pero ang sinabi riyan ay yan ay pambuhay lang na ito para lang dito. Samantalang pagkamakadiyos, ang, pagka ang kabanalan ay para sa buhay na ito at para sa susunod na buhay. So, when it comes to death, it is not in your hand. Divine decision about death is without human knowledge. Alam niyo ang talinghaga na sinabi ng ating Panginoon bilang sagot doon sa humingiling sa kanya na mangasiwa sa paghahati ng kanilang mamanahin at nagsabi siya ng talinghaga tungkol sa isang mayaman na nagkaroon ng maraming ani at gumawa siya ng magandang plano sa kanyang buhay. Pero anong nangyari? What he failed to reckon with is what Jesus said God had already decided in Luke 12.20. But God said to him, You fool, this very night your soul is required of you and now who will own what you have prepared? Akala niya handang-handa siya para sa susunod na siguro'y limang taon, sampung taon para sa kanyang kabuhayan. Ngunit hindi nasa kamay niya ang desisyon kung kailan siya mamamatay. At hindi niya alam na nang gabing iyon, nakatakda siya na mamatay. Kaya tandaan natin, health alone or lack of it is not the only occasion of life or death. Hindi ko matmalusog ka ay sigurado na magpapatuloy ang buhay mo. Ang sabi ng psalmist in Psalm 89, Remember how short my time is. Why have you made all men in vain? Now, vain here means in the sense of brevity. What man is he that lives and shall not see death? Shall he deliver his soul from the hand of the grave? Yan ay tanong na kahit paanong gawin mo sa iyong katawan at masagandang pangalagaan ng katawan, ngunit, Huwag mong dyan isaalang-alang ang iyong uh, katiyakan ng pagpapatuloy ng buhay. May mga dahilan ng kamatay na hindi lang sa malusog o dahil sa nagkasakit. Here is data that shows the leading causes of lost years of life. This was in the year 2013. Nandiyan ang mga sakit pero pansinin ninyo isinama ang violence, andyan ang war, Andiyan ang road injuries sa makatuwid. Alin man dyan ay maaaring maging dahilan na uh, maputo lang iyong buhay dito sa mundo. Huwag na wang itulot ng Diyos. God forbid. But who knows when that is going to come no matter how healthy your body may be. So, yan ang isang uri ng fatalism na mayabang. I am the master of I am the captain of my soul. 
I am the master of my faith. Ang ikalawa ay yung kabaligtaran. Ang nagsasabi, if it is my time to die, there is nothing I can do. At uh, ang nagiging bunga niya ay indifference to the body. O kaya ay no care for basic health. Ibig sabihin, ay ano man gawin ko naman, palusugin ko sarili ko, pangalagaan ko, basta't dumating ang oras ko, e eh, oras ko na. At karamiwan kasama dyan ang walang pagsangguni sa mga dalubhasa, sa mga doktor at hindi nila pinapakailaman ang kanilang mga basic health indicators gaya ng blood pressure, sugar level at iba pa. Kaya wala silang pakialam kung anong estado ng kanilang kalusugan o kaya ay maaring may sakit na sila at yan ay mali. At meron itong isa pang bunga na nagiging uh, kabaligtaran and that is adventurism in cheating death. Uh, they are not avoiding danger. Probably it is giving them the rush of adrenaline that will make them probably enjoy their activities. So they go through sports activities that cheat death and they think that is a way to enjoy life and they justify that by that fatalistic attitude eh kung oras ko na kahit na anong gawin ko ay darating ang aking kamatayan ang tamang sagot rito ay sabihin natin there is indeed an appointment with death the bible does make it clear in Hebrews 9.27 it is appointed for men to die once but after this the judgment Pero kailangan kong sabihin at nakikita kong mahalagang ituro ang prinsipyo na predestination is not our precepts for duty and responsibility. Alam ninyo bilang pastor, ito isang bagay na kinakailangan kong ipagpukpukan kung minsan sa mga natuto ng pagkasugirano ng Diyos at ang kanyang predestination na hindi nila dapat gamitin ang predestination as their source of duty and responsibility because predestination is secret. It is in the secret will of God. What God has revealed are His precepts and principles of the Word. Yun ang pagbataya natin ng mga tungkulin, hindi ang lihim na itinakda ng Diyos. So, we are responsible to take care of our physical life and earthly safety. Because for us, the human body is of noble value. Yan ay turo ng ating Panginoong Heso Kristo. Take no thought for your life. He tells his disciples what you shall eat, neither for the body what you shall put on. The life is more than meat and the body is more than raiment or clothing. Kaya may halaga ang katawan mismo sa sarili nito na kung ito ibigay sa atin ng Diyos, dapat nating pangalagaan. At ang isa pang mahalagang isagot dito, we are responsible to take care of our physical life and earthly Safety. Ang tungkulin natin ay panitilihin natin ang ating kalusugan. At kung tayo nagkakasakit, tungkulin naman natin na sikapin ang gumaling. And we see in the greeting of John to his friend Gaius in his third letter, he said, Dear friend, I pray that you may enjoy good health and that all may go well with you even as your soul is getting along well. At balanse ang kanyang alalahanin para sa kanyang kaibigan. Good health as well as the good keeping of his soul. There is no hyper-spirituality suggested in the New Testament that you only take care of your soul and your state of the spiritual life and be, of, be without concern for the body. That is not Christian. And Apostle Paul gives this advice to Timothy in 1 Timothy 5.23 No longer drink only water but use a little wine for the sake of your stomach and your frequent ailments. So, hindi ito endorsement to drunkenness. Paul is using wine here in its therapeutic effects on Timothy's physical necessities. 
at makikita natin that it is right to avoid danger especially when that danger is life-threatening. Jesus himself said so when he was sending his disciples and he told them of persecution to come. Hindi niya sinabi na tanggapin niyo na lang ang pag-uusig kung dumating yan at kung oras niyo yung oras niyo. Ang sabi niya, whenever they persecute you in one city, flee to the next. For truly I say to you, you will not finish going through the cities of Israel until the Son of Man comes. Ang punto lang dito ay... Kung hanggat maaari, makaiwas kayo sa mga taga-usig at makarating kayo sa kung saan hindi kayo maaabot ng pag-uusig, ay gawin ninyo. At may makikita tayong dalawang individual sa Biblia, isa sa lumang tipan, isa sa bagong tipan, na nagbibigay ng ganitong halimbawa. In the case of Jeremiah, he made this request of King Zedekiah. Uh, but now please listen to my Lord the King. Please let my petition come before you and do not make me return to the house of Jonathan the scribe that I may not die there. Eh, pinakulong kasi si Jeremiah sa utos din naman ni Zedekiah pero nung, nung gusto ni Zedekiah ang makarinig ng salita mula sa Panginoon pinatawag niya sa Jeremiah si Jeremiah hindi niya binago ang mensahe ng salita ng Panginoon kahit na hindi magandang pakinggan. Pero binigay pa rin niya ang kanyang request na kung maaari eh wag siyang ibalik sa kung saan nanganganib siyang mamatay. Ang isa pang halimbawa ay si Apostol Pablo nang siya nanganib sa Damascus, siya pinapadakip ay hindi niya ikinahiya na isang nga itong bagay na pinagmalaki niya na pag-iingat sa kanya ng Panginoon I was lowered in a basket from a window in the wall and slipped through His hands, mga halimbawa ito ng paglayo, pag-iwas sa panganib na maaring magsuong sa sarili sa kamatayan. So, let me just conclude with some Christian thoughts for those who are fatalistic. Uh, una, we have responsibility. Responsible to care for the body, responsible for our health, extend our life where possible. But death is God's sovereign Decision. Balansehin natin ang dalawang bahagi na yan. So we demonstrate right care for the body and earthly life. Makikita natin ito kay Pablo nang siya nagbabalak pumunta sa Jerusalem and he knew the danger that he was going to be exposed to. Humingi siya ng panalangin sa mga taga-Roma, Romans 15:30 and 31. Now I beseech you, brethren, for the Lord Jesus Christ's sake, And for the love of the Spirit that you strive together with me in your prayers to God for me, that I may be delivered from them that do not believe in Judea, and that my service which I have for Jerusalem may be accepted of the saints. Salam ni Pablo ang panganib na susuungin niya at humingi siya ng panalangin na mailigtas siya sa ganong panganib. Kaya Pa, pa, tamang pangalagaan natin ang ating katawan, responsibilidad natin yan. But then ultimately uh, maging sa mga Kristiyano na merong katiyakan na sila pupunta sa langit do not let the assurance of heaven translate into carelessness of life. But ultimately as I was saying, yielding to God's sovereignty accepts His goodness whether it is to continue in life or to conclude life in death. This brings us back to Philippians 1.20. Apostle Paul was facing an impending trial, the result of which he wasn't certain what it would be. Uh, maaring siya ay makalaya na yun ang kanyang gustong mangyari, sabi niya sa verse 19, Pero kung hindi man, ano man ang maging kahinatnan, handa siya pareho. Sinabi niya, according to my earnest expectation and my hope that in nothing I shall be ashamed, but that with all boldness as always, so now also Christ shall be magnified in my body, whether it be by life or by death. Kaya matustusan man ang buhay niya, kaya ay Pasya ng Diyos na matapos na, either way, ang sinasabi niya, Paul's ultimate desire is whether by life or by death, Christ is going to be magnified. Yan ang tunay na kabanalan 
na naisin nating maparangalan ang ating Panginoong Heso Kristo sa buhay man o sa kamatayan. My last challenge is seek daily wisdom. How to live your brief life on earth. When I say this is a daily adventure of wisdom day to day because you do not know when that day of conclusion is going to be. And I reserve for last the most uh, important verse concerning this matter. Psalm 90 and verse 12 says, So teach us to number our days so that we may get a heart of wisdom. Nang sinabi niyang number our days, hindi ibig sabihin bilangin lang, the word number here has the sense of assign. Assign your day. You have an assignment for the day. And make sure you do that assignment for that day to be responsible, to be a servant of the Lord in your life. Kaya mga kapatid, yan ang tunay na hamon ng kabanalan. Kung tayo may naitustusan sa ating buhay, tayo ay mabubuhay para parangalan ng Diyos, isulong ang kanyang kaharian, mabuhay sa ating panawagan na may mabuting patutuo at kung dumating ang takdang panahon na tapusin niya ang ating buhay at bawiin niya, tayo ay kumarap sa kamatayan, masasabi natin, buhay man o kamatayan, gusto nating maparangalan ang ating Panginoong Heso Kristo. Ganyan po ang pagpapakabanal. Maraming salamat sa inyong pakikinig. Sana kayo ay nakinabang at pagpalain kayo mula sa pag-ibig ng Diyos Ama, mula sa biyaya ng kanyang anak na si Heso Kristo at sa pakikipisa ng banal na Espiritu.